In this video I will show you how to set up a two-dimensional image so that a three-dimensional object created in Blender can be either animated or placed in position and also cast a shadow. Before setting the scene up I recommend that you change a few things in this right hand panel. So with your pointer over the edge hold down your left mouse button and drag this panel over. Now your render data button should be selected. This is a little button with a camera in it. If it's not selected then left click on it. And in the dimensions section it says resolution x1920 px pixels y1080 change these to match the size of your image. What this effectively do is when you look down the camera which we'll be doing um, during most of this rendering, the view will be the same size as the image. And this makes it a lot easier for setting up um, the image, um, but basically you'll see what I mean uh, when we go a bit further on. If you've clicked on this camera, just right click back on the cube. Um, so once you've set up your um, resolution on the X and Y section, also look for the little world button it's actually got a world in it and left click on it and then next to where it says ambient occlusion in the little box left click so a tick comes up you'll be using this later on to uh, change some of the lighting but also what this means is that you'll be able to see the image um, once you've um, unwrapped it the other thing the distance between the camera and any object is set um, at um, clipping um, size or distance of a hundred. Now obviously I don't know what image you're going to be using and what you're trying to do with it so you might find that you need to be able to view from the camera to your object further than 100 so right click on your camera and then look for the little button with a camera in it again or it's more like a projector actually it's between the chain links and the checker sort of button left click on it and under clipping where it says end 100 it might pay to set this at a higher setting um, so for instance left click in the end box and type in something like 1000 and that will increase the distance between the camera and the objects that you're working with substantially. Okay, if you've again, if you've clicked on this uh, camera, right click on the cube, and we're sort of good to go. Now I've chosen to do this in Blender Render. Um, it, it's it's a bit fiddly um, and probably not quite as easy to do as. Um, in cycles render but the lighting is a little bit easier to set up so if you've never done it before um, this is a good starting point um, and then you can sort of move further forward and make more complicated backgrounds and work in cycles render but for now we'll, we'll do this in in blender render and um, hopefully it'll give you some idea of how to get on and do scenes that you can animate and put shadows on so with your cube highlighted press 1 on your numbers pad and then roll your middle mouse to zoom in a bit press tab on your keyboard to go into edit mode and then A to deselect everything now hold down shift and right click in the left and right top corners so that you've basically selected the two left and right um, vertices now press X on your keyboard and left click on vertices and that will delete those vertices. Hit your spacebar and in the actual um, search box type the word align. And then left click align camera to view. If you roll your middle mouse you'll increase the view size or decrease it and then press N on your keyboard. Drag this slider 
until you can see the words lock camera to view and left click in the little box next to it and what we're going to do is we're going to match this edge of this sort of um, what's left of this cube so it's just outside the view of the camera and basically this is this as I was saying before I've made my image to match the default size of the camera which we were talking about in a render section earlier on so anyway the easiest way to do this is first hold down control followed by your middle mouse button and then move your mouse and that will you can zoom in and out a lot smoother than just rolling your mouse and basically line your edge up so it's just below the bottom edge of the camera view once you've done this go back into this box and left click in the where the tick is next to the camera view to deselect the lock camera to view then press N to close that panel down now whilst in edit mode still press A on your keyboard and we're going to expand this or increase the size of this uh, I don't know what you want to call it now, it's not a cube is it, what's left of this cube on the X axis, so press S, X or S followed by X and then move your mouse till that bottom edge is just slightly outside the each corner is slightly outside the range of the camera view now come to the bottom of this screen and look for the little cube the highlighted line on it or edge. Now this is your edge select button. Left click on it. And then right click on the middle edge. And again press S followed by X and move your mouse so that this edge is just slightly outside the range of the camera viewer. And left click to accept. Now right click on the top edge and press 3 on your numbers pad. Roll your middle mouse to zoom out a bit and with your pointer over the green arrow hold down your left mouse button and drag this all the way over. Now this is what I was talking about when we were talking about the clipping how far the camera views an object. Um, I'm just going to hold down shift followed by my middle mouse button and move this screen over a bit. this is going to be the um, image and uh, it depends on where you want to place your objects depends on the shape to a certain extent and how far back say this line needs to be obviously if you wanted to place an image here it wouldn't be that easy you'd need to make this line further back um, so as I said in uh, my introduction this is just a guide so anyway having said that I'm going to right click on the top edge again and I'm going to go into camera view now with my pointer over the blue arrow left click and drag this view or this edge up so it's just past the camera range or edge of the camera view then again I'm going to press S followed by X and I'm going to drag my mouse so that edge just goes past the camera view doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate and left click to accept now we're going to put some loop cuts through this we're going to divide this um, sort of these this cut cube up and normally you can do this by holding down control followed by R but with my screencast on mine doesn't work so another way you can do this is if you go to the left of the screen and drag this slider down until you can see the button that says loop cut and slide so I'm going to just left click on this and then I'm going to place my pointer to the top of this um, screen then I'm going to type 20 so I've got 20 loop cuts I'm going to left click and then I'm going to right click to accept and again I'm going to go into the loop cut and I'm going to place the pointer 
in this area here to this sort of the top back edge of this uh, panel or pane or whatever you want to call it and again I'm going to type 20 and I'm going to left click then right click to accept I'm going to do one more loop set of loop cuts so I'm going to left click on loop cut and right at the bottom which is this bottom edge so I've got a pink line going across I'm going to type 20 I'm going to left click and right click to accept now if you press 3 on your numbers pad again you'll see that you've got this kind of setup and hopefully you'll start getting the idea of how you're going to set this up and as I said before the, the, the angle of the camera everything you, you know it's not always as straightforward as this um, but this is a good way of starting through the camera view um, in fact if you're looking down an ob object it's, it's actually a lot easier to do um, set this up than looking straight ahead um, I'll go back into camera view by pressing 0 on my numbers pad and then I'll press A to select everything to basically A deselects and also selects now the camera this is based on looking straight ahead through the camera so your, your sky and your ground basically would go to infinity and disappear in the middle of the camera so that's probably one of the easiest ones to do when the camera is looking directly ahead also I recommend that you use your own pictures because you can you know how you've set the, the camera up and um, you know the kind of angles you've used but anyway let's get on with uh, setting this image up or else we'll be here all day okay and as I said before A to D select A select everything come back over to this panel and look for the texture button this is a button with a red and white text uh, checkerboard um, grid on it and left click on it and making sure that this button here this other texture grid or uh, checkerboard is selected by left clicking on it left click on new left click where it says open and then by using your left mouse button navigate to the folder where you, your image that you're going to use is stored if you want to see the image to the left of where it says normal there's a little button with four icons in it just left click on that now I'm going to use this image here now sometimes you can just double click on it it'll open it doesn't always work but we'll try it and it did it opened it so double clicked using my left mouse button just above where it says brush there's a materials button this has got an orange disc in it left click on this and then next to the box it says text to the left hand side there's another little um, checkerboard uh, button left click on this now you should be able to see a little picture of your image left click on this now if you hold down control followed by Z your image will open up like this unfortunately it never works first time um, I don't know why but it's quite easy to rectify in the box to the right of the texture box look for the cross and left click on it and then again go back into this checkerboard um, button this texture button and next under image next to the image that you, you've selected left click on the cross again then left click on open and as before using your left mouse button navigate to the folder where you've stored the image and then using your left mouse button double click on the image again and then come back to the just above where it says brush come back to the materials button just above it the orange disk 
and then to the left of new left click on this checkerboard here and again left check left click on the texture which has got your image to the next of it and what you'll find is this happens you'll get loads of little pictures in edit mode still press U on your keyboard and then left click on project from view bounds and you've now got a very simple three dimensional background the one thing you'll find that you'll get sort of shading on this now we'll get rid of this by going up to the top of the screen and left clicking on the orange data button or the materials data button which has got an orange disk in it and the reason you get different um, sort of shading is this if you look at this image here you'll see there's a, a, a brighter um, sort of dot or a circle on it this is the what they call a specular and you'll find that underneath specular the intensity is set at about 0.5 so the higher you go the more sort of um, I don't know it's, it's reflection really so anyway left click on the intensity and just type 0 and hit return just to see that your image is actually working and you're not getting any strange lines because the one thing in blender which um, I don't know why the image that you'll see through the blender view is will be blurry so just press F12 on your keyboard just render the picture to make sure you're happy with the view um, if you hold down shift now because you're in um, UV in the UV viewer if you hold down shift in your middle mouse button just have a look round you can zoom in just see if you're happy now I know about across here that's where the um, I kicked back the view and no I can't see any lines so I'm happy with that Roll my middle mouse and I'm going to center up everything again okay um, to come out of this viewer bottom left of this screen um, if you hover your cursor over this button it'll say UV image editor left click here and then left click 3D view Now if you press F, uh, sorry, if you press 3 on your numbers pad and then hold down your middle mouse button you'll see what you've actually created is an elongated sort of background and um, as I was saying before the images I wanted to use are on this path um, it's not perfect and it's only meant to be a basic uh, sort of introduction of how to do this but effectively now you've got something you can work on if for instance you know you, you your path went further back you may have to change this settings but it's not easy not not, not difficult so um hopefully this is uh give you some idea how to do it anyway I'm gonna press zero on my keyboard again to go into um <coughs> camera view and then I'm going to import something I I'm on relatively new to all this myself so I've got got um, a make human character I'm going to import into this so take a few seconds to set that up so what I'm going to do is import it and then come back to this video in a minute okay so I have just brought the um, make human image into this scene and sort of set her up sometimes they don't come in first time you've got to sort of delete them and reload them so that's why I had a bit of a break okay now again as I said with, with this sort of um, camera pointing forward this is probably one of the easiest ones to do because if you press 3 on your numbers board or on your numbers pad roll your middle mouse button to zoom in press F5 to uh, go into orthographic view as well so that's 3 plus 5 equals orthographic with your pointer over the uh, blue arrow hold down your left mouse button and just drag your object so that it's in line with the bottom edge of this plane that you've uh, created and 
once your object whether it's a, a character or just a basic cube is in line again go into camera view and you can hold down shift followed by Z and that will take you into rendered view as you can see you've already got some shadows showing already but um, obviously she's far too big so we need to resize her so it's actually easier sometimes to flip between rendered and um, solid view by using this button here this is a, a little orange disc in it to the right of object view so left click and then left click solid and with your character still selected or your box selected just uh, press S and resize it a bit I'm going to take it so our eye lines sort of in the middle and then left click here go for rendered and maybe make her a little bit bigger okay back to rendered she's probably too big but anyway this isn't more about setting this up um, just change your bring her down a little bit she's obviously still standing above the ground back to rendered that'll do okay now in this app in the um, XY axis wherever you move your object it will always be on the surface um, that is level um, the only other thing now is to sort of set up the shadows um, I'm just gonna keep mucking around with this if you want to in camera view if you want to move an object um, on the Y axis and you can't see the Y arrow to click on it just press G and then followed by Y and then you'll be able to move your mouse to move your object on the Y axis so that's G followed by Y and then move your mouse in fact you can do that on the X and the Z axis as well if you want so I'm going to move her a little bit forward so have a look what she look like now that's a little bit better okay um, I think we'll ro obviously again if you another thing to rotate um, you can rotate on any of the axis so I'm going to rotate it on the Z axis so I'm going to press R followed by Z and I'm going to move my mouse to rotate the object and again back into render to see what she looks like she's a little bit this is sometimes this is a, takes longer than anything else setting up the view but anyway you get the idea I'm not going to do much more with this that'll do um, one more thing then crack her back here a bit Yep, that'll do. I think she's probably too big for this uh, picture, but um can be here all day otherwise. Okay, let's set the lighting up. Just at the top of the um, timeline, with your pointer over the edge, hold down your left mouse button and drag this view up. So you just basically can see the actual, uh, your view. And then to the bottom of the screen left click on the timeline button and then left click 3D view and then you're looking for the lamp now this will have a little this will be a little black dot with um, a couple of rings around it right click on this and then your lamp data button should come up and um, you can then change things in this um, I'm going to left click on the button next to the point that says Sun and you can see the shadows going in this direction to the left oh, to be honest with you I can't quite remember where these shadows went so I think they sort of went from left to right so I'm going to just press G with this lamp selected and bring the lamp over to this side and then I'm going to rotate it by pressing R followed by Z and then move my mouse so that the sun is pointing towards the car my character you can't really see her that well but she's just down here and then 
I'll press 1 with the pointer in this section in actual fact they're set up nicely um, if you want to change the angle in this view um, one on your numbers pad press R Y and again you can rotate the view or the, the direction that the sun's pointing in and then once you're happy left click this screen will disappear but I find this is the easiest way to set a lot of things up just takes a little bit longer right okay it's not looking too bad um, certain things you can change um, in this section you can change the energy so if you left click in the energy section and then drag your mouse you can reduce the power of the sun or you can increase it depends which direction you go right increases it and left decreases it I'm going to go and set this at 1. It's not looking too bad. Um, there are other things, as you know, you, you can go on forever. The point of this video really was to show you how to set the background up, not how to one, and um, a little bit about doing shadows. Okay, the other thing, go back into the world data button, and as we we, we um, highlighted the ambient occlusion right at the beginning now if you left click in the box it says factor you can adjust this take it down to about 0.5 see what it looks like take it back up again left click and move your mouse until you're happy with the shadow that's being cast and also the reflections on your object just keep going until you're happy with it all I think that looks reasonably good okay and that's basically it like I said before this view your image will be blurred but that's sorted out in the render finally um, render this image you can change certain settings you can either render it by pressing F12 and when it's finished saving it but we'll just go into the render thing if you've never done it before I should imagine you probably have but anyway look for the little camera button again and left click on it this is your render button then drag this slider down don't worry about the output and saving that you can do that after you've rendered it and in the box it says PNG left click and you've got different image um, codecs you can use um, PNG is perfectly fine or you can change it to um, JPEG I'll leave it at PNG and unlike um, Cycles Render there's not so many things you can do in this section um, and that's it really so all you need now to do is uh, left click on the uh, render button and your image will be rendered come down here to the button that says image left click on this and then left click save as image go to wherever you're going to save your image I always dump everything on my desktop and then worry about it afterwards then in this box where it says untitled left click and give it a title I don't know whatever you want to call it I'm just going to call it shadow and then left click possibly twice on save as image and you should find that your image will be ready and waiting for you and I don't think that looks too bad for a quick um, render the only other thing obviously I'm not going to go into doing animation and that will be here forever and a day this works with animation as well it's a bit fiddly I didn't get mine correct for this intro to be honest with you but my main uh, point of doing this was to show you how to do shadow cast um, setting up stuff can be a bit fiddly it's doable you'll need to resize if you're going to use um, a make human object you'll need to resize it and um, reset the um, settings um, I'm not going to bother doing that. It's a, 
another tutorial for another day so hopefully that's um, been of some help to somebody out there one person maybe um, and uh, thank you for watching cheers